Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, the longevity products, the longevity business, our Truth Skin Health formulations, if you or a loved one has a health challenge that you'd like help with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to my website, brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can order Longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off our website as well. If you are an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to be your own boss, make your own hours, earn your own paychecks, as much money or as little money as you want, if you want to enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business, the entrepreneur lifestyle might be for you. Check out the longevity opportunity at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with ex accelerated aging or fine lines or wrinkles, if you've got hyperpigmentation, dark spots, melasma, if you have acne blemishes or you want to prevent the formation of acne blemishes, milia, whiteheads, tiny little bumps on the skin, retinol is for you. Retinol 5% gel, Truth Retinol 5% gel is made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our True Skin Health products. If you've tried to use retinol in the past and got irritated, and a lot of people have, if you've tried to use Retin-A in the past and got your skin irritated, you might want to check out our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, which is far less irritating than any retinol or Retin-A product that you'll get, either in the drugstore or the department store, and you won't have to deal with any of the toxic ingredients. Instead of toxic ingredients, you'll get a big dose of vitamin C, and you're not going to find that in any retinol products anywhere. Truth Retinol 5% Gel and all the Truth Treatment products are available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. Last we spoke, we're talking about my favorite non-essential nutrient supplement, NAC, NAC, N-acetylcysteine. It is a, compon a component of the body's most important detoxifying substance, perhaps, arguably anyway, the, the body's most important biochemical of all. Cholesterol is certainly right up there. That's an important biochemical. But a case could be made for glutathione as being the body's most important molecule, most, Im most important biochemical. And NAC, or NAC, is a component, a raw material for glutathione, the the most powerful guardian and detoxification molecule in the body. Glutathione, as well as NAC, provide protection against lead, heavy metals, cancer-causing compounds in, in the air, in our home. 
especially against drugs. NAC and glutathione are protect the body against drugs. In fact, the more drugs you're on, the more glutathione your body is going to be burning through. Glutathione provides protective support against pesticides, against Roundup and glyphosate. Glyphosate is extremely nasty, especially for the digestive system. Uh, glyphosate is, uh, kills bacteria. It's a, it's a pesticide, but it also kills the good bacteria in your gut. Big, big problem that not a lot of folks are talking about. Glutathione and NAC are protective against glyphosate and Roundup. Glutathione is important for DNA synthesis, for DNA repair, for making proteins as an anti-inflammatory molecule. It plays a key role in iron metabolism. In fact, it's not a stretch to say that pretty much every single health parameter, every single marker of health can be affected, can be improved by glutathione and glutathione processing, especially the immune system, the brain and the nervous system, and the digestive and respiratory system as well. Glutathione is said to be a triple amino acid, or technically a tripeptide. It's made up of cysteine, which is, of course, available as NAC and acetylcysteine. The second peptide, or the second amino acid that composes the glutathione molecule is glycine. Glycine is available in bone soup and whey protein and cartilage. Gelatin is a really good source of glycine. Gelatin supplements, you'll get those in your glucogel caps from Longevity. Pretty much all high-protein foods are going to have some glycine in them. And then the third amino acid, or the third peptide, that makes up the glutathione molecule is glutamine. Man, I love this stuff, glutamine. Glutamine has so many... It's just as multifunctional, pretty much, as NAC. Glutamine is particularly important for the intestine, for digestive health. Anybody who's got Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or irritable bowel, bowel syndrome would be very smart to be supplementing with glutamine. The cells of the intestine, the cells that get damaged when you have any of these intestinal diseases, these cells can run on glutamine. Glutamine actually can provide cells with energy, particularly the cells of the intestine, but all cells. That makes glutamine very helpful for diabetics. And also, if you're a uh, sugar craver, and who isn't a sugar craver, if you're trying to wean yourself off of sugar, glutamine will have the benefit of, of uh, allowing your body to get some energy without having to deal with glucose, without having to deal with insulin. So glutamine is a super, super, super important amino acid. And that's probably why it's the most abundant amino acid in the body. Glutamine is ex uh, extra important for bodybuilders, weightlifters, athletes, anybody who's working out a lot would be wise to be supplementing with glutamine. And benef these, these uh, uh, muscle building and, and uh, anti-fatigue and antioxidant benefits of glutamine are independent of its uh, function or its role as a raw material or as a building block for building glutathione. So glutamine not only helps you build glutathione, but it's got its own benefits. Keep in mind, by the way, we, we talked about glutamate a couple weeks ago. We were talking about glutamate as an excitotoxin. Glutamine is not glutamate. Glutamate, even though they sound the same, glutamate is a, uh, an amino acid that functions as a brain chemical. It's involved in excitatory reactions, and MSG, monosodium glutamate, is an excitotoxin. But glutamine is not glutamate. Don't get confused between those two, even though they sound very similar. They are different amino acids. Glutamine is really, really important stuff. We're going to be spending some time talking about its many health benefits here in the next, probably, uh, if not the end of this week, probably next week. The point I want to make here is that to assure effective production of glutathione, it is probably a good idea to make sure that you're getting a steady supply of the three amino acid building blocks, glycine from whey protein and from gelatin and from bone soup and from cartilage, NAC as a supplement also found in whey protein and high protein foods, and then glutamine again found in whey protein, other high protein foods, but also as a supplement. Get the powder. There's capsules and there's tablets, glutamine, uh, glutamine capsules and glutamine tablets, but get the powder. It's a lot less expensive. It's just pure glutamine. It doesn't have any taste. You can just put half a teaspoonful in water and drink it down. I put it in my smoothie every day. It's especially important if you're dealing with uh, frequent infections, cold sores, colds, flus. Great for anti-flu uh, as an anti-flu uh, anti supplement uh, during flu season. And uh, for folks who get shingles or cold sores, glutamine can be helpful there as well. Hi, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a quick commercial break and come back with more good health information right after this. Okay, 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about uh, NAC, glutathione, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you if you want to, uh, if you have questions about the longevity products, we can help you there too, 844-236-6010. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you're the kind of person that likes this sort of thing, health and nutrition and supplements, if health and if a nutritional supplementation has helped you or a loved one in your life and you want to help spread the word and make some money at the same time, please check out the Longevity Business Opportunity at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can be a longevity distributor and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program and make some money at the same time. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470, and they can give you the full scoop on the longevity business. Or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so continuing on with glutathione, our master protector, our master biochemical guardian angel. Glutathione kicks in when, whenever the body is under threat or under attack. You can use building blocks of glutathione if you're interested in upping your glutathione levels, NAC, glycine, and glutamine. It's a little difficult to get glutathione by itself. There are glutathione supplements out there. Glutathione is broken down by digestive juices. Although there are some supplements, glutathione supplements, that are protected against the digestive juices. They're enteric coated, as they say, so they break down in the intestine. Liposomal glutathione. There's even a glutathione intranasal spray I've seen. Or probably the best, thing, the best way to get your glutathione is to take the building blocks. You can get glutathione in foods. Uh, interestingly, watermelon is a really good source of glutathione. Asparagus is a good source of glutathione. My favorite food source of glutathione is avocado. I love avocados. Avocados are pretty much nature's perfect food. It's got great fats in it. Avocado does super tasty. Mix a little salt in with your avocado too. The fats and the salt go together really nicely. Avocados are a great snack and also they're a great source of glutathione. And as I said earlier, whey protein will get you some glutathione in addition to the building blocks for glutathione. It's probably the best way to get your glutathione if you're going to get it from foods, in my opinion, is whey protein. Now, some people can't do whey protein. That's unfortunate. Whey will rag on your stomach a little bit if you have dairy allergies. It's got uh, most whey protein has some lactose in it. You might want to try different forms of whey protein. The more, the more uh, processed forms of whey protein are a little easier on the stomach. You'll get your glutathione, of course, in whey protein. If you can do whey protein, you'll get your glutathione in there. But uh, probably the best way is to take your, take your building blocks as supplements. N-acetylcysteine, uh, glutamine, and glycine. Glutamine is, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, glutathione is especially important for anyone dealing with liver disease or fatty liver. So is glutamine, for that matter. Glutathione is a really neat supplement for folks to take if they have NAFLD non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I love that term, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The reason we have NAFLD now is because so many people have liver disease and that aren't drinking. So many people have the same kind of liver disease that 30 years ago you'd have to drink a pint a day, uh, a pint of Jack Daniels a day to get. Today we all have that kind of liver disease. So they have to distinguish between non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and uh, alcoholic cirrhosis or alcoholic fatty liver disease, so any kind of fatty liver problems, you can benefit from supplementing with glutamine, cysteine, and glycine, your glutathione building blocks, one out of three Americans. That's a lot, man. Hundred, uh, over 100,000 people in this country have NAFLD. Really, nothing says how uh, our disastrous health challenge, disastrous state of Americans' health more than this NAFLD epidemic. You're not supposed to have fatty liver disease, yet most of us do. This is despite all the doctoring and all the money and all the insurance companies and all the Obamacare and all the ACA, uh, affordable health care, uh, all, the, all the doctoring we have, we still seem to be sicker and sicker and sicker. This is just a disastrous, disastrous state of affairs. 
All in all, this, the liver is unbelievably important. The ancient Greeks used to think that the liver was the brain. The ancient Greeks used to, th used to think that the liver was the most important structure in the body. It may be the most important structure in the body. It performs 500 different functions. Of course, the brain and the heart are probably more important than the liver, but still, the liver is incredibly, incredibly important. At any given moment, 10% of the blood supply is running through the liver. It, it performs 500 different functions in the body. It fights infections, it manufactures fats, and, and stores fats, and sugars, and proteins, and hormones. It deconstructs hormones, and detoxifies hormones. It uh, builds cholesterol, and estrogen, and testosterone. And, uh, it manufactures tens of thousands of different enzymes. It's a warehouse for vitamins, vitamins A, and vitamins D, and the B complex. Just unbelievably important. And of course, the liver, as everybody probably knows, everybody listening to this program knows, it's our major detoxification organ, and it does its detoxification work largely via the biochemical effects of glutathione, which is to say, supplementing with glutathione and its building blocks, NAC, glycine, and glutamine, eating your whey protein, taking your bone soup, using glutamine powder, with all of these strategies, you will be building and supporting and uh, improving the functioning of this super, super important organ. According to research presented at the International Liver Conference in 2016, glutathione is effective against the onset and progress of NAFLD and also metabolic syndrome, which is a diabetic a, a, a constellation of symptoms that occurs in diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, brain health issues, joint health issues. All of these are associated with diabetes, and they call it metabolic syndrome. It turns out that glutathione can help you if you're dealing with metabolic syndrome, in addition to being important for liver health. Another article, this one published in the journal Gastroenterology and Hepatology in 2016, it found that liver health markers in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease patients were, quote, significantly improved by treatment with glutathione, unquote. The more pollutants we're exposed to, the more important glutathione becomes. The more pot we smoke, the more pills we take, the more alcohol we drink, the more allergy medicine we're on, the more drugs we're using, legal or illegal, whatever. The, whatever you're doing that's a vice, you can use glutathione to help protect yourself. You should be using glutathione to protect yourself. And the more of these vices that we use, or the more of these vices that we participate in, the more our glutathione becomes depleted, which means the more at risk we're going to be for health challenges. The more cigarettes we smoke, the more alcohol we drink, the more, uh, the more prescription drugs we take, the more susceptible we're going to be to other illnesses. And this exposes the irony and the medical insanity of treating sick people with drugs. Of course, most people who take drugs are sick, otherwise they wouldn't be taking drugs. So most people who are on drugs are already predisposed to glutathione depletion, and now we're giving drugs. This is something that pharmaceutical companies don't ever talk about. This is something your doctor doesn't even know about. The more you take your doctor-prescribed medicine, the more you're at risk for other illnesses. So you'll read these silly studies that tell you that statin drugs protect you against heart disease, but they don't tell you they increase your risk for other diseases. This is the utter insanity of the pharmaceutical model of, of treating disease, the complete biochemical ignorance, 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 ignorance of using drugs to reduce the risks of chronic diseases. It is stupid beyond belief. I'm not saying there's not times for drugs. There are, but not for treating, uh, for reducing the symptoms of chronic disease. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get your calls in a moment. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about NAC as well as glutathione. NAC, my all-time favorite non-essential nutritional supplement, a building block for the body's master protecting glutathione. If you're interested in, use, in uh, obtaining glutathione and you don't want to supplement, there are foods that contain glutathione. Fruits and vegetables will get you glutathione. Uh, walnuts are high in glutathione, avocados, as I say, top 10 glutathione containing foods, watermelon, interestingly, asparagus, uh, this is in no particular order, by the way, avocado, grapefruit, oranges, potatoes, strawberries, tomatoes, uh, potatoes, and acorn squash. I love acorn squash. 
It's also a good source of glutathione in addition to being very tasty and very delicious. There's also a lot of sugar in, in acorn squash too, but uh, it's also a good source of vitamin A and beta carotene. Beta carotene, I should say. Anyway, tomorrow we'll continue talking about glutathione and N-acetylcysteine and uh, excitotoxins and green tea on the bright side. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. I want to read a couple stories here. This is from the British Journal of Pharmacol British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology. Certain cardiovascular medications may increase the risk of falling. Do you know falls are the number one cause of death from an injury in people over 65 years of old? And interestingly, while uh, the death rates of uh, cancer death rates and heart disease uh, death rates have declined over the course of the last 20, 25 years. Death rates from falls have actually increased, especially among the elderly. 55% of fall deaths in 2013 happened to people who were over the age of 65 years of old. And a hidden cause of these fall, fall deaths is drugs, prescription drugs. According to this article, beta blocker drugs, heart drugs, cardiovascular drugs, are particularly uh, dangerous when it comes to falls. A new analysis, this is a quote from the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology, a new analysis suggests that among older adults who take cardiovascular medications, those using beta blockers may be at increased risk of falling. These types of drugs are already known uh, to cause problems. In fact, beta blockers are among the leading cause of death, of, uh, among the leading cause of deadly drugs, or among the leading cause of deaths from drugs are the beta blockers. The beta blockers work by shutting down your heart. Only God knows why anybody would think that shutting down your heart or slowing down your heart is a health strategy. Nonetheless, that is, that's one of the ways the doctors treat heart disease is by shutting down the heart. Also, they treat high blood pressure by shutting down the heart and angina and other, other cardiovascular health issues. If you're on a beta blocker, get yourself on glutathione too. It will help you, or glutathione building supplements, I should say. It will help your body detoxify the beta blockers. More lousy news about drugs. Statins may not be used for protection against Parkinson's disease. Statin use, uh, doctors love using statin drugs for all kinds of things. Drug companies are always looking for off-label uses. So statin drugs are not only used to treat heart disease, they're also used to treat Alzheimer's, or also, I'm sorry, Parkinson's disease as well. But from the journal Movement Disorders, we find that statin use was associated with higher, not lower Parkinson's disease risk. No surprise there if you understand the importance of cholesterol for the brain. Anything you do to suppress cholesterol production artificially is not going to be in your health interest, even though you may statistically lower your risk, not, not, your, not overall incidence of heart disease, just your risk of heart disease. In other words, the risk of heart disease may be decreased. That doesn't mean you're not going to get heart disease. That doesn't mean you're not going to get a heart attack. It just means the risk is going to be lower by using a statin drug. Of course, they don't tell you what the, uh, about the increased risk for other health challenges associated with statin drugs, not to mention glutathione depletion, as well as depletion of NAC and, and glycine and glutamine in the building blocks of glutathione. Just another reason not to use prescription drugs for long-term chronic illnesses. Not to use prescription drugs for long-term chronic illnesses, at least in the long term. If you need something in the short term, that's one thing. But to stay on a drug chronically is never, never, Never a good thing in terms of health, even if it does lower the risk of certain diseases. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let us go to John in Maryland. Good morning, John. Welcome to the bright side. Hi Ben. Sorry about Friday. I, I no just worries. wanted a quick add-on. Um, so my my bone and joint issue is in my right elbow. I have bone spurs, and I'm, I'm missing about 25 degrees of flexion. Mm. Is it physically possible to dissolve yes. bone spurs? And I've, yes. I've heard well, that you can dissolve them with, um, with uh, apple cider vinegar. Well, here's the thing. You don't want to dissolve your bone spurs. Your bone spurs are protection from deteriorating joints. So mm -hmm. dissolving the bone spurs isn't going to make a difference because they'll just come back. I don't even know if you could do it that way. Apple cider vinegar supports calcium metabolism, that's for sure, and helps you absorb calcium. But right. it's not going to remove the cause of the bone spur. The bone spur is there because your joints are deteriorating. You follow me? Right. So it's yes. a way the body protects itself. Calcium deposits represent a protection. So what right. you've got to do is you figure out why your joints i.e. your connective tissue is deteriorating. It's not uncommon. You're, okay. you know, it happens to all of us, but you got to figure out why the body is breaking down. So what I would be doing is not, although bone spurs can be miserable, I'm certainly not marginalizing or dismissing the, the misery of bone spurs, especially if they're in a place where you just, you know, like your foot or your heel or something, yours mm -hmm. isn't, but wherever they are, they're miserable. 
nonetheless, they represent protection and what your job should be is to figure out why your body is deteriorating and why the connective tissue is breaking down. I would be number one, looking for problem foods as always, and number two, starting to rebuild the connective tissue. Now, both of those go together, by the way. So, mm-hmm. in other words, leaky gut represents a breakdown in connective tissue. You follow me? Okay. Yep. So, leaky gut syndrome will cause two problems. Number one, or has is related to bone spurs in two ways, I should say. Number one, leaky gut syndrome will cause the entrance of toxins into the blood. Once toxins get into the blood, they'll <clears throat> deposit in the connective tissue. They'll cause all kinds of inflammatory distress at the level of connective tissue and accelerate deterioration. So, stopping the the entrance of poisons into the blood through the leaky gut is very important. And number two, the connective tissue, the uh, the intestine is made up of connective tissue partially. So when the connective tissue breaks down, you get more leaky gut. So when you patch up the gut, you're going to get a couple, or when you build connective tissue, you're going to get a couple of benefits. You're going to patch up the gut, and you're going to prevent the formation of those bone spurs. Use bone soup. Use bone broth protein. Use glycine supplements. I would be also making sure that I was using vitamin C. If you get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Yeah. This is a very uh, under a uh, make sure you're using your vitamin C. Vitamin E can also help if there's any inflammatory issues at the level of connective tissue. Using stretching techniques can also generate connective tissue. We talked about that a couple of, of months ago. Okay. Stretching and exercise will also help generate connective tissue. Uh, the B complex is. I've been using the glucogel, but I wasn't on seeing that. any benefit. Stay on the glucogel caps. Do 10 or so capsules a day. Glucosamine is very important for building connective tissue, as is high aluronic acid, H-Y-A-L-U-R-O-N-I-C, high aluronic acid, about 100 milligrams a day. I like liquid silica gel for helping generate connective tissue. By the way, all of these are anti-aging strategies because many of the, many of the effects of aging are related to connective tissue. So whatever, whenever you do these supplements, you're going to be slowing down the aging process in addition to building the, building the connective tissue. Uh, the bone spurs themselves, they're not going to go away unless the deterioration of the tissue goes away because, as I say, they are a protective response. Although apple cider vinegar is good for a lot of things, even if it doesn't make your bone spurs go away, it's good for a lot of other things. And that, Calcium de- cartilage back up? Yes, you, these are all strategies for building the cartilage. When I say building connective tissue, I'm talking about building cartilage. Oh, there's one more thing I was going to tell you, and I totally forgot what that was. Um, but stay I'll on the apple. Listen si- offline. Listen offline. Stay on the apple Thank cider you. vinegar too. That's awesome, awesome supplement for helping your body absorb Excellent. minerals. Thank all you. right, buddy. Thanks, thanks so much for your call. Oh, calcium. This is what I was going to say. Calcium stones are similar to bone spurs in the sense that uh, they have to do with uh, uh, dirty blood, clogged up blood, toxins that are getting into the bloodstream through the intestine, through leaky gut, through a, a leaky gut. Thanks for your call, John. Appreciate it. All right, we'll take, we'll take a break. We'll come back with your phone call right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Cleveland and say good morning to Joe. What is up, Joe? Good morning, buddy. Morning, Ben. Um, I had an update and a question. Sure. I called you back in January. Uh, I was on the ketogenic diet for weight loss. Okay. And I wasn't getting results. Okay. And you told me to cut my calories. Okay. And, uh, you were absolutely right. I uh, started losing weight immediately. I lost 30 pounds. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. four pant sizes. Awesome. Uh, Just the I'm ketogenic now... diet? Is that all you did? Well, I was exercising, and okay. I take the longevity products. Good deal, Joe. Uh, Congratulations, man. Thank you. Well, literally, thank you. It was your guidance that got me down. No but, problem. My uh, pleasure, right man. Now, Right now, I'm five foot ten, 145 pounds. That's great. And I need your advice again because I'm very skinny, uh, but I don't have any muscle definition. That's right. You want to get yourself in the gym. working for it. Get in the gym, buddy. Start doing some resistance training. You don't need to do a lot. It's much better to do intense resistance training over the course of 10 or 15 minutes than it is to spend two hours in the gym and just farting around. Uh, so if you could spend 15 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, three days a week, you're going to start to build muscle. The most important thing about muscle train or uh, a weight training for muscle development is to work yourself to fatigue. That means uh, work to uh, lift weights or do your curls or your bench presses to the point where you can't bench press anymore. You can't do any more curls. 
Working to fatigue is where muscles grow. And you only need to do it about 15 or 20 minutes a day, three times a week. But you're not going to build, it's very difficult to build muscle unless you give your muscle resistance, unless you do something that forces the muscle to grow. When you come home from the gym, that's when you do your protein. Uh, also, of course, you're going to be doing some, a little bit of Can fat I, as well. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Um, I should say that for the last two years, I've been doing every week, I do two hours of kettlebell training. I go heavy, and then I also do two hours of high intensity interval training. You shouldn't and about be able three hours sh- of walking. Well, the walking isn't going to, you know, that's nice, but it's not going to build muscle. But the, you shouldn't be able to do two hours of intense training. There's no way. I, I, I mean, a week? Oh, a week. I thought you said a day. Yeah, that's two, my total for the week. I go oh, I'm classes. sorry. I'm sorry. So I thought you said a, two hours how much a day? For the week. What do you do a day? What do you do in a workout? I do an hour. Uh, an hour in workout? Okay, so, so that's a little bit between kettlebell and high intensity interval training. Uh, and you're not for building an hour mu- a day. And you're not building muscle? I'm building it, but it's not showing. Like for example, when I'm in the mirror, like when I get up in the morning, the upper four abs, I can see them popping through, but if I were to lean back or kind of spread my skin out, it looks like there's a thin thinly spread layer of cottage cheese. Okay. Okay. Over that's it. the yeah. That's the that's probably from the from the poor the bad living for a while. Uh, those are deposits of fat. They'll go away eventually. How long have you been doing the kettlebell training? Two years. Uh, you should be noticing a little bit more results. But if you just lost thirty pounds, I would still give it time. Sounds like if you're if you get got some abdominal muscles showing through there, you sounds like you're doing all right. How about your arms? What do they look like? Um, it, I have a I'm. I, it's not showing, but I'm assuming that I've gotten stronger and yeah. know, there's some form showing, but I have no definition showing. If you um, if you so want to get I more, can you with the keto? Yeah, absolutely, diet? A- absolutely. Okay. Stay on the ketogenic diet and also stay on the kettlebell workout. But you know what you might want to consider doing is throwing in a little bit of weightlifting. It sounds like you're doing great though. I, I'm not. I wouldn't change anything, but I might add in a little bit of weight training. Maybe reduce the kettlebell a little bit and then add in some bench press and some curls and some chin-ups and that kind of thing. Okay, so go real heavy. Go real heavy, yes. Go real heavy uh, and go to fatigue. Go to where you can't bench anymore. You know that feeling where you, the, the, the bar just doesn't go up, where you, where you don't want to do another move because you're not going to yeah. get the bar up again? That's what you're looking for. And it doesn't take very okay, long to so do on. that. So do heavy so weight. No change in the diet. Uh-uh. And or the kettlebell. Work out harder. Just work out harder with weights. Throw in some weight training. Let me know how you're doing, too. Stay in touch, okay? Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right, man. Congratulations. That's awesome. Awesome news. All right, man. 30 pounds. Love it. Love it. Love it. That's what I'm telling you guys. If you follow what we talk about here on this program and you follow the regimens that we give folks on the phone, there is no way you're not going to lose weight. There is no way you're not going to build muscle. There is no way you're not going to be able to wean yourself off your drugs, and there's no way you're not going to feel better. It's just the way the body works, folks. This is the law of the body. It's like the law of gravity, except it's the law of biochemistry and the law of the body. All right, let's go to, uh, let's see here, Gregory in North Carolina. Good morning, Gregory. How you doing, buddy? Oh, let me hit the button here. Hi, How you sir. doing, How Gregory? You doing, hey, what's going on, man? Um, my issue was I know someone who has Crohn's disease, and the ulcer is located in her terminal ileum. Okay. She also has severe food allergies. And low stomach acid, which I think is mostly contributing to her situation while she can't break down anything. Okay, well, she's, she's going through, a lot, of, she's going through a lot of pain. That's terrible. That's terrible. I mean, that's enough motivation, the misery, absolute misery of intestinal disease. I mean, it's indescribable. To, if, if you hadn't had to deal with it, it's absolutely indescribable, the, the, the misery that's associated with this thing. And, and to, to make the misery even worse, it's tragically unnecessary. Have you this gal fasting right away. Two days, three days, or do a Swero V cleanse. Half a bottle of Swero V every hour. Swero V contains whey protein, uh, fermented whey protein, and bacteria, and electrolytes as well. It's a real great snack in the middle of the day for folks who are eating a lot of food. You can substitute a little once uh, one of your snacks with a Swero V. But for folks dealing with intestinal issues, it helps you fast and it gives you electrolytes and bacteria for the gut. But uh, giving her food, her digestive system a food holiday, a break for two or three days is not optional. It's a must. She'll feel better, too, by the way. 
when she starts eating again, have her pay very, very close attention to the specific foods that cause distress, and she's going to see instantly her favorite foods are going to cause a problem. That's a food that she cannot, must not be eaten. The consequences of eating those kinds of foods for this gal are too tragic to even discuss. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to think about them. But just have her know that they are absolutely horrific. The uh, next thing to do is repopulate the gut bacteria with a good probiotic supplement, something like the Nightly Essence. She should be using caloric restriction, eating only when absolutely necessary, and restricting her foods to easy-to-digest foods, ground-up foods, smoothies, soups, yogurt. If she can do yogurt, a goat yogurt is the best. Uh, and then bone soup, of course. Aloe vera gel can be extremely soothing. Same with noni. A good nutritional supplement program is an absolute must for anybody dealing with intestinal disease for a couple of reasons. Number one, the nutrients will help the body regenerate the, the, the cellular re regenerate the tissue in the intestines. But also, when you have a broken down intestine, especially if you've had it for a long time, you are functionally malnourished because you can't absorb your B vitamins, you can't absorb your fatty nutrients, you're basically starving. And that is going to compound health challenges that are not associated to the gut. She's going to be at higher risk for everything else, all other kinds of health challenges. So getting on a supplement program is a must. In addition to the nightly essence probiotics, I would be using the Beyond Tangy Tangerine throughout the day. It's liquid. It'll be easy for her to digest. Make sure she's on the ultimate, uh, the, uh, the, uh, ultimate EFA as well as the Osteomag. That's the entire Healthy Start Pack. I would also throw in the Ultimate Selenium. She should go to the health food store and get 50 milligrams a day of zinc, which is very, very important for intestinal health, and also she should be using apple cider vinegar and digestive enzymes with her meals. If she follows that program, and that's by no means comprehensive, there's lots more she can do, but if she follows that program that I just gave, that I just uh, uh, listed out for you, and you can, you can review the program at benfuchsarchives.com or brightsideben.com or have her review it, she will guaranteed begin to feel better and feel better quickly. Now over the course of time, and by time I mean months, she will also start to absorb her nutrients more effectively and she'll just feel overall better. But her intestinal health will improve almost right away if she follows that program, which again is nowhere near comprehensive. Uh, last but not least, make sure she's using her fatty nutrients, particularly vitamin D, which is extremely important for cardiovascular health. I like using fish oil to get vitamin D. You can also get vitamin D supplements and also the sun is a good source of vitamin D too. She probably has other health challenges and she'll notice, notice improvement there, but she will notice significant improvements in her intestinal health if she follows that program. Gregory, I want to get one more call in. I hope I helped you out, buddy. Thank you so much for your call and, and good luck to your friend. All right, Wes in Idaho, you get the last word, my friend. What's going on? Yeah, how about that? Uh, ben, can you tell me a comment on emu oil for skin? I understand it's one of the highest sources of vitamin K2, the MK4 type, which I guess is better than MK7. Well, they're different. You know, that's a little bit complicated. The MKs here. Emu oil is a great source of good, great source of fats. Uh, I didn't know about the vitamin K in emu oil, and I'm not sure about that. I have to look that up. I don't. I hadn't heard that. Is that definitely true? That it's uh, that it's got uh, K, vitamin K in. Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay. That's news. One of the highest, and also a uh, company in Australia claims that they have the highest source of vitamin K2. Okay, then that's. Uh, I can see why that would be. Uh, oils oils contain vitamin K. I don't. I'm not a big fan of emu oil. Uh, for the skin, although there are some nice lipid, uh, lipid stabilizing benefits if you take it orally. It has some healing properties. There's better things to use on your skin uh, than vitamin K, than emu oil.